Praise Lord, my dear brothers and sisters. Warm welcome to one and all of you. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It gives me a great pleasure to stay connected through these online sessions. And uh, God has been merciful that he had enabled such platforms where we could share the word of God freely. And also it helps to build our fellow brethren and sisters and take them towards the side of God. And that helps them to walk as the children of light. The whole objective and the motive of we getting into these sessions are none other than sharing this good news from the Bible, this good news of salvation, good news of redemption, good news of deliverance, good news of freedom from bondage, good news in the blood of Jesus, the only instrument that the devil is scared of, good news in the name of Jesus, the only name which the devil is terrified. When Jesus went, the devils and the, you know, the whole gang, Trembled in fear, oh God, the Son of God, why have you come to torment us before the appointed time? Many people think the appointed time is maybe it's crucifixion time, resurrection time. No, you know what is it appointed time? Before the second coming and the Armageddon. The war of Armageddon and the, I would rather say Revelation 20, 10, where he is going to be sealed in the bottomless pit once for all. That happens right after the right before the white throne judgment. That is after the thousand years uh, rule of Jerusalem. If you read Revelation 19 and 20, you will understand about which I have spoken in the uh, Jesus coming soon series and various other series. Anyway, welcome to this online series where we are dealing with a heavy lifting subject. We are, we are, we are talking about a very, very important organ and important person, I would say. <laughs> okay. His name is tongue, All right? Untamable tongue. In life, we can control everything, but this untamable tongue, it's not easy to tame or control. And that's the reason Bible calls it an untamable tongue. Any of you have experiences in this room? I have so many experiences with my tongue where I don't want to talk certain things, you know, I end up talking that. Um, that too, in the earlier days where I had accepted Christ at a very young age. Yeah, the talking is quite imminent, right? You will all be worked up and you will have to talk and stuff like that. And um, it was not easy for me to control my feelings or thoughts. And um, yeah, there, there were a couple of times where I even remember sobbing too much for talking like that. Now, and nowadays, I would say for, for quite some time, I'm very, very careful not watching the words of my mouth, but watching the intentions of my heart. Right. That's my personal testimony. You can accept it as testimony or witnessing. I'm the witnessing soul for what the word of God is preaching to you and me, isn't it? This is true. This is real. And that's that's exactly the reason why we had been spending enough time in this concept, the untamable tongue. Why? Because many people take lightly the words that proceeds out of the mouth. Ah, it's okay, brother. What to do? We are all human beings. No. Yeah, we are all human beings, but we are special. We are created in the image of God and we have been given that sixth sense to think and talk, not talk and think. Right. And forget about talking, thinking. Right. Both of these are originating as words and intentions from your heart, deep down in your heart. And that's why Bible talks about those six organs, eyes, um, eyes, mouth, heart, mind, uh, hands and legs, right? And, uh, and, and uh, all these sensory organs are responsible for transmitting what is not unnecessary, perhaps. And therefore, you and I need to not only watch the words of your mouth, of course, but then more importantly, we need to watch out the intentions of our heart. Yes, this is our fifth episode and we are talking about the various categories of murmuring, murmuring, gossiping, complaining. All these three attributes contribute to one thing. It's called as demonic wisdom and demonic wisdom shall make this little muscle hanging in the middle of your mouth. Pronounce demonic words. Demonic words means many people think it is about sorcery, witchcraft, black magics. Oh, no, no, we don't talk about that. It's not about sorcery. It's not about 
witchcraft right you are not we are not witches but the thing is you will use every single word that are un, unmeaningful and um, useless and idle words bible call it as right in kjv version matthew 12 36 for which you have to give an account in the day of judgment you have absolutely zero escape you understand what i'm saying you just cannot escape from the day of judgment and that is why bible keeps emphasizing hey don't end up doing this it will be so so bad for you know, to see the brethren and sisters being blamed for this reason so that's why it's very important that you stick to the word of god and allow the word of god to travel through your heart and mind which pierces the heart just like a sword is being pierced yeah and it cuts all the carnal desires it cuts everything it it's it, it is like surgery yeah it's like that tool which operates that you know that surgical tool right which is many doctors may know this definitely right the surgical um, uh, instrument uh, they hold in their hands to cut off that organ which is uh, which is like you know um, maling malignant right and and can spread cancer in your body they operate it and they take it out why because it can spread cancer to the other organs in the body and therefore we may end up with various other problems if it starts spreading it's as good as your bacterial infection isn't it they give you antibiotics and they kill all the bad bacteria and the good bacteria and once again the bacteria grows from scratch nullifying all the bad elements from your body similarly hebrews 4 12 says when the word of god travels into your heart it is like that surgical procedure it chops off every cancerous element every kind of ugly word filthy thought every kind of misinterpretations confusions misconceptions and um, evil thoughts wicked thoughts bitter envy what are evil thoughts what are wicked thoughts we had been telling this for the nth time second timothy chapter 3 you will see some 10 20 or 25 items given there as a list for uh, if you want to if you want to know if you are a person who is possessed with evil thoughts you read that galatians chapter 5 verses 17 to 19 or 20 you take and read right and mark chapter 7 verses 21 to 22 you take and read this list will cons you consolidate and it together comprises and it calls you a person whether you are filled with demonic wisdom or heavenly wisdom about which we spoke in the previous sessions too okay so here in this episode what we are concentrating is we are concentrating much about the intentions of your heart your belief system in your heart your value system in your heart your priorities in your heart how much you respect god how much you love god how much you honor god how much you abide in his laws and commandments how blessed are you how cursed are you we are going to bring that um, visibility brand transparency and we are going to uh, make it available for you yeah we are discussing about you brother we are not discussing about anyone else okay so we need to ensure that we get into these kind of discussions therefore we don't get distracted or you know sidetracked for all wrong reasons or right reasons whatever you may call it as your focus should be on the word of God and that's exactly what we are doing we discussed about various categories of murmuring already in the previous sessions some of the categories belong to uh, areas like condemnation and stuff like that whereas uh, some of the areas belongs to uh, like you leading yourself in such a pathway where you lose the crown yeah you lose the reward you lose the crown of glory today we will be dealing in the, on the same lines on other areas where murmuring can lead us into other consequences but before that we also need to look at the um, tips or um, what do you say uh, the, uh, the advice given to us by, by uh, from bible as how can we help ourselves not to murmur as a beautiful verse from philippians chapter 2 and whole philips chapter 2 is very good to read it's about christ it's about the christ-like mindset it's about the uh, Christ like humility and stuff like that in this you will see a very good verse 
Philippians 2, 14 and 15, do all things without murmuring and disputing. See, murmuring comes because you have an attitude to dispute. Because why? You are having that ego. He came only yesterday and uh, he starts advising me. I am the elder brother in this church for so many years. At workplace also, right? I am a senior. This fellow came as a junior and he starts fighting with me. No. See, advices can come from anyone. There is no age group. There is no experience needed. If a person is talking uh, with, you know, through heavenly wisdom, then I think you need to be very, very humble and submissive listening to that person. There is no hard and fast rule that you should listen only this uh, to these people and not listen to other people. But then you need to judge, you need to discern, you need to have the spirit of knowledge. You need to have spirit of wisdom. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 1 to 11, you take and read and please seek the Holy Spirit for these three gifts especially. And therefore you will be not disputing or quarreling, but you will become a good listener. And good listeners never become murmurers or gossipers or uh, quarreling type, you know, they'll be very focused on what the other person is saying and they will compare it with the word of God and then they will come to some conclusion and they'll be very decisive and their judgments will be very firm and right. 10 out of 10 times. That's how Jesus was firm and right. Yeah, you'll be affirmative in every decision that you take. No looking back, no going back, no looking at the sides. Or consulting men. Probably you will consult God, but not men. Verse number 15 says, Philippians 2, 14 and 15. 15 says that you may become blameless and harmless. Blameless and harmless. You know, if a person is possessing these two characters or nomenclatures, attributes of, you know, a good human being, then he's to be called as a harmless person. Where you can find in the Bible is one person by name Job. He was blameless before God and he was harmless. Why? Because although being a rich man, he could enter into widow's house and start raping them and or take them as their wife. Nobody could question them. Nobody could question him because he was the he was like a king in that place. Very prominent and wealthy man. No one can question. But then he never did that. He said, I was father to the widows, and I made a covenant with my eyes that I will not lift up my eyes. When virgin daughters cross my path. Wow. And that's why he's harmless. Why he became harmless? Because he was blameless. Why he became blameless? Because he was very, very honest before God. Whenever he enters into the presence of God. And when does he enter into the presence of God? All through the day. In everything he does, he feels the presence of God is with him. God is monitoring him. God is watching over him. God is hearing him. Yes. When you look at some dirty scenes, you need to be sure that God is also looking at you what you are watching. God will not look at the dirty scene, but He will look at you. Because why? God, God, even if He makes a choice uh, to look at the wicked sides, wicked scenes, He cannot. Because why? He is holy. His eyes are pure and holy. Zechariah 4.10, Habakkuk 1.13. You understand what I am saying? You need to become like God and Job was following the principles of God. Yet there was no salvation in him because Jesus had not yet come. And that's why Job was to be called as blameless and harmless. If you are blameless, you will be harmless. If you are honest, you will be blameless. If you are holy, if you want to be holy, you will be honest. Then you want to be holy. When you have that realization in your, in your heart that you are not holy. You thought I'm going to speak some words of wisdom. No, very simple principles, right? When you have the realization in your heart that you are not holy, that's the first step for you to become holy. That's the first step towards renewal of mind and transformation of spirit. Realization, technically called as realization. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Why all of this is needed? Ultimately, if you don't follow all of these things as a process, as a chain line of correction, it will lead you towards the wrong side and you will have no escape. There is no way that you can possess Christ-like mindset or spirit of humility or become like God, perfect like Him. Matthew 5, 48, Philippians 2, 5 and uh, John 14, 12. You can never become like Jesus because why? These are the doctrines which will help you become like Jesus. Yeah, it's as good as saying you don't want to become like Jesus because you will lose the 
lustful passions and the desires of your flesh, you will be a compromiser. You will be practicing the act of licentiousness, compromiser. You will be sensual in your behavior, sensuality, lowering your spiritual standards and you will embrace the worldly standards. Why? Because you want to cope up with the worldly pressures, peer pressures. Yeah, because other people will look at you. Ah, you are that old ambassador car. Ambassador car is the oldest, you know, uh, grand car. Uh, you know, even today also many, many uh, members of parliament and many officers, they use ambassador car. Yeah. Um, but then now it has become old because other cars have overtaken. But And it's been 60 years, 50 or 60 years now. And people call you as old ambassador car because why? You are not at all fashioned. You are not contemporary. You are not modern. People hate you. And therefore, you don't want to, um, you know, appear as a despise in their heart, uh, in their in their eyes. And therefore, you compromise on your spiritual quality, spiritual standards, and you end up doing some nonsense. That's why you and I have to really watch out watch and pray bible says be diligent in your ways bible says let your thoughts be acceptable in the sight of god bible says then only you will get favor from god second corinthians 6 2 that you may become blameless and harmless children of god without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation you will never make excuses what to do brother you know, peer pressure. If I don't tame that guy, if I don't corner that guy, he's going to overtake me or he's going to grab my work and uh, show it to my boss as if he had done. I need to really watch out. Yes, you can be clever. You can. You need to be shrewd. Bible encourages, but you need not be cunning and harmful. Yes, you should find ways to protect your work. You should find ways to hold your crown. Without falling down, a king is going to be shaken and the throne shakes. What happens? Crown falls down. And crown falling down is, is uh, you know, uh, is, is abomination. It's not a good sign. You're not worthy to sit on a throne as king without even knowing the ways to hold your crown. When somebody is shaking you, when enemies come against you, you should not tremble with fear in such a way that your knees are knocking against each other in such a good pace that you end up um, you know getting paranoid and stuff like that you your crown falls down i'm talking about the crown of glory the crown of salvation the crown of grace the crown of redemption that jesus did on the cross of calvary you are holding it enough in the midst of temptations troublemakers troublesome situations and when you go through the challenging moments when you have some sickness in your body when your heart is filled with grief agonized moments you still hold your crown of glory. Then you're that brother who will not find fault against anyone or anything. Because why? You are so stable in your thoughts. You are so consistent in your ways. Your spiritual desires are not something like which will, which will be dissolved. And it goes on. Among whom you shine as lights in the world. All of you want to become the children of light. In the sense what? You want to become preacher, teacher, uh, miracle worker. You want to be the sister, so, you know, dreaming visions. And you want to be that uh, person who will torment the devil or bind the evil forces. You want to do all of these. Then you are called as children of light. How can you become children of light? You can become children of light only if you are blameless and harmless. How can you become blameless and harmless? You need to quit this habit of finding faults. And the person who finds fault or um, um, among the children, whoever it may be, they are murmurous. And that's not the right attitude according to Bible, at least according to Philippians 2, 14 and 15. So somebody is asking me, please give me some tips how to quit murmuring. Please provide me some guidelines how to overcome gossip and complaining attitude. But this is the tip and this is the guideline that you have from the word of God, Philippians 2, 14 and 15. Brother, I'm telling you this. If you apply this principle seriously, yes, faithfully, I'm telling you in few days you will see the result. All that you need to do is just decide. Stick to your decision. Be decisive. 
You're not going to do it. You're not going to look back. You're not going to turn this side. But you're going to stick to the, to the word of God. And you're not going to admit the demonic forces to, you know, overtake you. 1 Corinthians 10.10 10 is another uh, paraphrase which I could remember about which we discussed already. But that is also another tip that you can overcome murmur. Not murmur as some of them also murmured and were destroyed by the destroyer. You are giving room to the devil. Many people think when they enter into some temple and worship idols and or uh, some people get some, uh, some, some food items from a demonic place. When you eat that, you will be defiled. That's when the evil forces will enter or when you see a lemon on, on your way, unknowingly you stamp on the lemon, oh, evil forces will come and capture you. All of this is complete rubbish. I don't mean to say you should go to the temple and start eating and worship idols. Not like that. But unknowingly had it happened, do not worry. Why? Because these are least of the things <laughs> that enables evil forces to flow in and through you. You know where evil forces flow? Into your mind, into your heart. Through the sensory organs which I have explained in another Tamil series, I think. Proverbs chapter 6. There are six organs being spoken there. I told all the six organs at the beginning of this session, right? You need to watch out because the evil forces or the demons play mind games as how satan played played mind games with eve he was talking to her for a very long time is what the scholars were saying because she was not so dumb to fall as a prey just walking and that's guys uh, may may he may maybe it was true that he was an animal who was standing with two legs but no big deal right it's not so very attractive that she should immediately reject God's instruction. No, no, no. He played in her mind. Mind games. Yeah, it's called as, um, uh, what do you say, <laughs> seducing somebody, speaking all kind of um, persuasive words and uh, words that will instill some level of um, uh, desire, desires or passions towards lust and all that and they convince them they influence them over a period of time you keep talking that's why bible gives you the instruction do not have association with evil evil do not have evil companionship or refrain from evil companionship stay away from such people people who are worldly stay away from them don't hate them don't count them as your enemy second thessalonians it's written right they don't stick to the word of God. Don't look at them as the enemy. Devil, come here. Don't call them with such names or something like that, right? And then it becomes a curse. You cannot curse your brother. He's also created in the image of God. He's created by God, for sure. But then his doctrines, his philosophies, his belief system, his priorities are much different. It's not according to the word of God. You don't have to become his judge. Leave it to God. Let him handle. And pray about that brother, right? Even one soul perishing. God is not going to be happy. God is going to be very depressed even if one soul is perishing. For example, if the population of this world is going to be X, even if X minus 1 is going to uh, be the count uh, in the kingdom of heaven, which means what? One person left behind. Everyone else made their way. Wow, what a day it's going to be, right? Only one person left out. Huh? And if that one person is going to be devil himself, then I'm not worried. But if there is a human being, was left behind you know God's eyes are going to be on him because why he's God of compassion he's very he's so loving that he sent his only son John 3 16 right all of us know while we were sinners he loved the world so much he loved the mankind so much that God sent his only son Jesus come down and live for us die for us he preached and taught three and a half years he walked around and did good to the people Bible says and yet they crucified him. They treated him so badly. They bet him, bruised him, spat on him. And what, 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 does it, what does it reflect? That reflects the love of God. Love of God. And that's why you should refrain from all kind of um, people that practice or, uh, you know, the doctrines of the world, the pleasures of the world. If they stick to the pleasures of the world, what happens? They don't get a second opportunity and you also don't get a second opportunity. Why? Because you were caught in the trap. You have gone too far into the trap. That's what was the case was Eve. Too far into the trap 
that, that she couldn't resist or she couldn't come back. She was seduced. She was influenced. She was fooled. She was made to believe the lie of the devil as the truth. And you know the result. Yeah. That's why Bible says that, you know, you will be destroyed by the destroyer. Be, be careful. Watch out. This is also another principle how you can overcome murmuring attitude, complaining, gossiping. Many people are thinking magically if they use the word name Jesus, right? In the name of Jesus, you devil get lost. Devil won't go. Devil will beat you black and blue. He, black and blue. he will beat you so badly that you will start bleeding. Is it possible or not for the devil to beat somebody? Tell me. Physically, he beat somebody. They went to he led demon demon possessed man and they started saying in the name of jesus you devil get lost i know paul i know jesus who are you you are not worthy that's what it means i see no holiness holy deeds in you i see no fruits of holy spirit in you you are even worse than me at least i am faithful to my master devil but you are not faithful either to my master or to the not to your master lord jesus but you are that lukewarm person neither hot nor cold and if God himself is saying that he will vomit you, where it is written? Revelation 3, 3.16 or something. Revelation 3. Yeah, talking about a church. I think Lloyd Asia. Okay, so how much more you think I'm going to respect you? you think, I'm sorry, how, how much more I'm going to treat you brutally? They were, they were bet so hard and they were bleeding. And then uh, that's not enough. He wants to settle another account. Yeah. How come you can inst insult your master Jesus? Even I tremble before him. Should, in, should you, being the believer, tremble a little bit at least? Then he stripped off the cloth and made them run naked in the middle of the streets. Imagine four or five guys <laughs> running together naked. All of them running together naked in the middle of the streets. Horrifying scene, no? Funny scene, but horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> all bleeding, all bleeding and running naked. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really getting, I mean, it's such a humorous scene. But then when you imagine yourself in that scene, then it will not be humorous. It will become immediately the scene will turn into a serious scene. Why? Imagine you running along with those, along with those guys naked. Brother, it's possible. Do not play with the devil. Do not play with the destroyer. Do not play with God either, right? Be a very truthful person. Be a blameless, be a harmless, and be a honest person before God. And before devil too, right? <laughs> you are not truthful before God. Obviously, devil will come and, you know, pull you by his side. Why? Because you are just like me, man. Devil would make that statement. You are like me. Dude, you are like me. Come. You belong to my side. You are not truthful. Huh? You're like me. That's why I became devil. Come on. Let's go to the party. And John uh, chapter 6 verses 41 to 43, we discussed already, right? And uh, Jesus says that, that for the Jews, was, the Jews were grumbling and, uh, you know, he says, I'm the bread that came down. So these are the tips. I think you have a fair understanding now, right? How to be an overcomer. You don't want to be a murmuring brother or a murmuring sister, correct or not? And it doesn't happen magically. It doesn't happen magically at all. Absolutely no. You need to put in efforts. And many people think the efforts are fasting and prayer. And I will go and get counseled with my chief pastor. And elders will pray and give me that oil. And I will, you know, lay it on my head. And I'll pray for my brains. And all the evil thoughts will depart. You need to pray for your heart, not for your brains. Brains transmitted into your heart and heart is the one which is like a container that holds account of every single incident that your brain went through and everything originates in your heart and it travels back through the brain and all the way to the mouth. You, you know how the physical anatomy works, right? You're all looking at me as if you have not learned any of this. You all learned this during your academics, right? Biology classes. This is how your brain and heart functions. But along with that, Bible adds one more flavor that's called a spirit. Yeah, the inner man, spirit filled man, or spirit related matters. That's where you and I need to watch out. 
okay now some people you know they kind of exemplify the murmuring attitude that's our next category right first of all they don't even realize that murmuring attitude is of devil it's not of god and having not even um understanding these basic tenses or not have not even having that minimal common sense they go to the next level of exemplifying that murmuring and they will entitle it as honesty i'm very i was very honest honestly i told what i felt in my heart that's not honesty that's cruelty yeah you murmuring and you hurt a person you murmuring and you complain against god you murmuring and nullify the word of god and the power and the glory you murmuring and insulting the name of jesus and his precious blood and you call it as honesty you are that cruel brother or a cruel sister you are the one who belongs and fits tightly in this category where people exemplify the murmuring attitude right exemplified they praise oh you know if i open my mouth nobody else will open why because your words are words of garbage nobody can't even hear it properly they will almost shut their ears heart mouth mind everything and they will run away you see brother when i start talking no all these people will run away they will run away because they are not not able to bear the stench of your mouth not their physical mouth you are brushing your teeth agreed yeah your words are filled with stench like you open the graveyard you will ah or a dead body or a dead dog once it happened so one of the houses that i used to live uh, under the ditch in india it's quite common right ditch runs just before your house they cover it with some slab one dog somehow squeezed and went inside it was dead actually twice or thrice these incidents happen i don't know maybe it is some uh, <laughs> demonic work I, i don't know and then oh my god i have to call up the corporation and they came and they struggled to pull the dog oh my goodness when they pulled the dog out the dead body dead dog sorry that carcass of dog everybody fled the spot they just couldn't stand it there and then they got some disinfectant and they poured over it and and then they disposed the body brother why are you preaching all this this is a nasty scene yes that nasty it is going to be when you open your mouth and you're going to speak uh, the thoughts of murmuring that originates in your heart you understand huh? that's why i explained it let the elaborate you're not able to take it in you're not able to bear it right when i explained about this dead dog decomposed body that smell nobody could take in not even the corporation guys they are used to it but even they couldn't <laughs> bear it it was so the smell was so bad and strong and they ran away the spot i really felt pity on those guys seriously you should also feel pity on those guys who who flee the spot when you open your mouth don't feel proud you don't exemplify and glorify your skills oh what a skill i have no one can defeat me when it comes to you know what is it debates and disputes ah i am going to be the winner you are number one devil you have the demonic wisdom am i coming hard at you you need to be happy for that because god loves you and that's why he allows me to come hard at you in fact it's not me who is coming hard at you but it's the holy spirit it's the holy spirit who loves you is admonishing you so please listen to his voice are you all with me yeah and a couple of incidents which we have read from the bible um you will definitely remember uh, such words uh, word of god sorry um exodus chapter 7 17 verses 2 and 3 um, i think we discussed about this in the third episode where we spoke about the life of israelites right and uh, therefore the people you know quarreled um and uh, with moses and said give us water that we may drink and moses said to them why do you quarrel with me why do you test the lord but the people thirsted there for water and they grumbled against moses why have you brought us up from egypt to kill us and the children and our livestock with thirst 
having seen so many miracles from god they never had that attitude of gratitude you and i having tasted so many goodness of god blessings of god one small sickness one small trouble or maybe a big trouble yeah all of us go through big troubles too right and small problems through forget about the intensity of the problem but it's about your attitude and god allows all of these you know why just for one reason to test your spirit how stable you are how consistent you are how strong you are and even moses slipped off in one of the incidents because he got so worked up because of all these people raged him raged against him um he couldn't take it anymore uh he violated the instructions of god instead of speaking to the rock rock of salvation or jesus it was like a symbolic representation he bit the rock again beating the rock is like crucifixion jesus cannot be crucified twice are you kidding me my son is not a toy that you can crucify a number of times no once allowed and that's it so god was angry with moses and he couldn't go you understand huh? so these are the things which you need to watch out why because many times you exemplify that murmuring attitude and you get carried away and it becomes part of your habitual practice and you don't have time to realize because you don't have common sense to realize therefore you will not make time to realize because according to it's not a serious affair you feel so proud about it as i, I mean just connect to the examples what i gave wherever you go people will flee, flee the spot even your boss will be scared of you oh my by, by the time this lady opens her mouth my goodness i will fall on her feet it's okay it's okay my dear you are the winner Exodus 15:24 so the people grumbled at Moses again saying what shall we drink these people never learned their lessons right and in the whole book of exodus you can see various incidents how they grumbled against Moses as a congregation not as individuals they are all biased they are all united in this business of rebelling against god there are some churches the whole church is corrupt like how the seven churches they all started very well and they became corrupt church except for that one church where god elevates their standards i, I think i spoke about this uh, in the uh, what is it seven churches and seven spirits series the faithful church the church in philadelphia except for them all the remaining such six churches were corrupt even in them also uh, he is giving a instruction hold fast what you have that no one may take your crown he is warning them he be an overcomer always be consistent in overcoming yeah you you and i also need to learn these things very quickly all right let's move to the next category right you understand huh? you don't glory in your murmuring complaining and all that yeah unless we complain yeah, they will also quote certain proverbs like only a crying baby will get milk brother crying baby will get milk yeah but a complaining christian will never get a place in paradise that's a new proverb <laughs> you are not a baby brother you are an adult you are a mature christian or you are a born again believer that's good enough learn new principles and doctrines imagine you being an adult and sitting in the middle of the house and you drink milk in that feeding bottle will you do that then why are you using that proverb a crying baby only will get milk you will not do that right people will think that you are mentally retarded and they will take you some to some mental hospital that it no externally you won't behave like that and internally you will behave like a baby huh? yeah we are all babies before god god is so old right the age of the soil is 5.4 billion years that means you can imagine he is the father of universe he is the man who runs god who runs universe before him we are all babies agree but that is different that is from spiritual tense yeah so you all need to understand these things and you won't exemplify that attitude all right and we need to get into the next category i'm trying my best to cover maximum therefore uh, i'm confident that we this will be our last this will be our last episode because i have to cover many many topics from the word of god you see one topic if i'm going to spend 45 sessions and 45 hours of teaching like these so many topics are there one life is not enough i ask god god if possible keep me alive as as long as you kept alive adam alive adam was living for 960 plus years you keep me alive god all my years 
I will preach, teach and practice and be the doer. I ask God for long life because I want to, uh, uh, the time is very short. We need to get so many children on God's side. That's our duty. That's our responsibility. Are you praying about it? Are you worried about it? Are you always worried that you didn't get enough chance to murmur and complain and quoting that crying baby example? Huh? Are you such an immature Christian brother? Please, today is your chance. Please come out of that attitude and God will definitely help you if you have the desire. Oh God, please give me light on my shortcomings and God is going to help you. He's your personal friend. Holy Spirit is your personal companion and he's going to help you. All right. Now, let's understand the consequences a little bit from the word of God. And it is going to be short because we read some of these already. But still, I want to recap it, right? The category is punishment is guaranteed. Yes. You deserve for condemnation when you make a choice, when you're so decisive that you want to murmur, complain, rage against God. Yes. You want to headbutt against God. You want to finger point God. You want to reveal your frustrations and disappointment in God and his promises. And you want to call God a liar. Why? Because all of these things, what you are saying, the Bible itself is useless, brother. This is not possible to practice, you know. I have heard many people saying this. Bigger is their judgment. This one reason is good enough for you to be thrown into a lake of fire. Why? Because you have even nullified Jesus. You are not only nullifying Bible, you are nullifying all the 55 messianic prophecy, prophecies that were spoke about Jesus. And the first prophecy given to us was from Genesis 3.15. And man could survive only for two chapters. Do you know that? Actually, not even two chapters. It's less than one and a half chapters. Only for chapter 2, Genesis 2, you will see the regime of human being. Walking with God and taking care of God. And moment the third chapter started gone you actually technically speaking we were um, what do you say our our era came to a close the mankind era came to a close in just one chapter what are you worthy tell me what are what am i worthy for nothing then what are you bragging about yourself and saying oh god have you have you not seen thy servant struggling and suffering Being poetic in prayer, prayer time and all that. So, okay. The punishments are guaranteed. Condemnation is guaranteed when you are an immature Christian having not understood the consequences of the words that proceeds from your heart and travels through your mouth. And I keep telling you, your mouthpiece, your tongue is only a delivery boy. He's a courier boy. He delivers what originates in your heart. Okay. So, in Numbers 11, 1, Numbers 14, 27 to 29, I'm giving you scriptural references because I'm, I'm just going a little fast on the topics which we had already done. Numbers 16, 45 to 46. You will see when the children of Israel grumbled, um, God sent serpents, God sent fire and burnt them and his anger aroused and he was all worked up. And uh, and couple of times he even was about to consume them instantly and kill them and close their chapter. And he said, Moses, I will just preserve your generation, man. I will raise a man out of your, I'll fulfill my plans out of your generation. And Moses pleaded God saying that, please never do that. Why? Because uh, your, uh, your, your name will be, uh, what do you say, they, they will talk so badly about your name. For your name's sake, O oh Lord, don't do this. What will the Egyptians speak about you? And he pleads all of these. And we discussed about all of that in episode 3, right? So what I'm saying is, this is Old Testament way of punishment or co condemnation from God, which is instantaneous most of the times. And I would feel it is far better. Why? You will realize then and there, if God is going to you know, kick you, beat you, slap you, or allow some animal to come and uh, you know, dodge at you, uh, there is a higher chance and probability of instantaneously coming to light. Correct? I always want God to chastise me. I welcome him. Proverbs 3, 11 and 12. 
these are one of my favorite verses how many of you quote such verses and ask god come and punish me god if i am derailing from my responsibility punish me therefore i have a chance to wake up i have a chance to realize my mistakes and come to you like come to light and walk in the walk as the children of light in your presence but if you don't chastise me for example if you don't allow god to chastise you bible says do not despise when god is chastising you punishing you proverbs 3:11 and 12 and proverbs 6:23 when he is instilling reproof and corrections in you when he is wanting you to change from the old pattern of living your life in spirit in, in sorry in sinful deeds and move towards the spiritual deeds and you are saying please don't mm um you need to always listen to the voice that inner voice that cries from deep within you yeah and uh, um when you whenever you feel that voice rising from within you i'm talking about the new testament era if you're a new testament christian you will not take these things so lightly at all <laughs> because why you are that man who's being led by the spirit galatians 5:16 be the man who walks in the spirit be holy as i am holy 1 peter 1:16 those who are righteous and holy shall become more righteous and holy but people take the second half those who are filthy they shall become more filthy and ugly and dirty that will determine which side you are are you old testament christian or a new testament christian these verses all right and obviously you are not free of condemnation that's my point i'm coming there right the new testament condemnation is not like old testament i would say old testament condemnation is far better you steal your hands are chopped why because the other organs are at least spared you will somehow go to uh, heaven with one hand because you are already judged according to the laws and commandments and doctrines and your punishment has been your account has been settled yeah your bad accounts are settled here your debt has been settled here and you will go to heaven but new testament you know what is the danger people twist this grace saying that where sin multiplies grace also multiplies nicolaitan preaching about which i have spoken in other series you google you will understand nicol nicolas was one of the disciples of paul he spoke something about grace and his followers twisted it misconception devil this is how devil fools his people the pastor would be saying something the preacher and teacher would be saying something and that's why peter leaves behind the instruction hey our brother paul he writes such rich messages you don't understand you don't preach just stay away refrain yeah and jesus said right one of you who will mislead my people it will be good for him to have a milestone tied around his neck and let him drown and die in other words gently saying you kill yourself man get lost don't even mislead if you don't don't try all that not in literal tense what jesus is saying is wake up man realize realize your mistakes you are misleading yourself and you are misleading others you are such a bad example you are a you, you become scapegoat and you are also convincing other people hey becoming scapegoat like me is so good man yeah but in the name of jesus you will preach all that why are you pulling my name bigger is your judgment you understand huh? so condemnation in the new testament is even more serious why because it doesn't come instantaneously it is all reserved for the day of judgment and you don't know how the day of judgment is going to be but not any more if you are a children if you are the children who are walking in light if you are the man who is walking in spirit you will already know where you are going you will never uh, you know be part of that hide and seek game you understand huh? there there were a lot of old testament people who died prophets were killed very good people prominent people righteous people job david and daniel and so many people they died but when they died they never had that assurance they will make their way to paradise why because they have not seen that messiah they have not tasted the extremity of righteousness you understand no? they have not um tasted the what i say the feeling and the experience of being freed and being redeemed from the adamic sin probably they all doubt uh, they, uh, sorry they all died in the doubt they all died in that fear and tremble trembling fear yeah they all were paranoid 
but yes definitely they made their way to paradise because luckily jesus did not come why after jesus came the standards were elevated laws and commands took a different height yes 1050 commandments new laws and commandments were introduced in the new testament although they were 27 books the books in new testament they contribute to 1050 commandments you can understand how strict and how rich and how heavy is the new testament and that's why we are spending lot of time a lot of time just with james chapter 3 verses 1 to 12 sorry 1 to 18 we have we ended up talking for 45 to 50 hours it's not about the time but i'm talking about the the content it's such a heavy lifting content it's not easy it's not, it's not easy it is difficult but yes you are right not impossible correct no many people take this christian life easy life magic word jesus magic word blood of jesus huh in the name of jesus and uh, through the blood of jesus nothing will happen why because satan will tell i know paul i know jesus but i know you also you don't deserve to call out that name jesus right because i am more righteous than you i am faithful to my master are you faithful to your master then you don't deserve to tame me why because you are on my side man you are not my enemy we are friends come let's go to hell and that is the condemnation i'm talking about your condemnation is reserved in the day of judgment and that's going to be very very dangerous i'm talking on the same lines only you are that murmur you are that gossiper you are that complainer you are that person who's having self seeking spirit bitter envy huh you are that person who's living in that earthly wisdom sensuality compromiser of the worldly uh, spiritual desires and embracing the worldly passions the lust of your heart secret sinner yes your condemnation is received uh, sorry reserved in the day of judgment for the day of judgment huh. now tell me who is better given a choice i would go back to old testament god because why jesus made our lives Uh, one said it's really rich you get so much of light yeah you have so much of power super you have it's, it's exciting to live this new testament christian life but at the same time it is going to be a very serious christian life not a playful christian life you jumping and dancing on the stage and all color bulbs and youngsters are all dancing and smoke and fog is coming and <laughs> it's like a festival for them no 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 serious christian life jesus came to introduce this very serious christian life elevating the standards he never said that no jesus jesus said this right i never came to abolish the law of moses i came to fulfill it and to take it to the next level and that's why i don't understand how easy going christendom has become how easy going christians have become they have never realized the seriousness because why they have never understood jesus enough <laughs> oh the poor jesus hanging on the cross and you are growing a long beard during the lent days and you are celebrating Res- resurrection sunday and all that traditional christian you are brother and that tradition never will take you to heaven not against tradition i love tradition christian tradition is good very nice but don't convert it to a religious tradition don't make it a religion be a traditional christian practicing the right doctrine doctrines traditionally you repent traditionally you reconcile traditionally you love the lord god with all your heart mind and soul traditionally you be a brother loving your neighbor as yourself ha huh? this is called as tradition not rising up sitting down growing a long beard wearing a long robe attending these many meetings i didn't even miss one sunday church how is your life tell me spiritual life what is the quality and standard have you changed even one percentage compared to what you were 10 years ago you you are the person who know the truth you are the best judge to yourself i am not judging neither god would but god will judge one day bible will not judge you now but the same bible will judge you one day that's called as day of judgment are you ready to face oh brother i I'm, i'm just 30 years old i still have some more time really you must be kidding me brother many many youngsters have died in the second wave of pandemic i'm not threatening you but you never know what god has kept in store the number of days i do i do not know the number of days i'm going to live on this earth but every day i take it seriously not anymore i'm playful no don't play games with god and don't play games with devil about which i told already right 
in, in a way, you know what? Jesus was so truthful and faithful to his master, Father, Yahweh. And likewise, devil is so faithful and truthful and united. They work as team and they're faithful to their master, Lucifer. The problem is only with you and me, brother. I'm telling you. We are not faithful. We are that lukewarm Christians. And that's why we deserve for punishment. And Old Testament punishment is gone. And that is how the devil had done a fantastic job in convincing people, especially Christians. Yeah. Don't worry, no condemnation, nothing. The condemnation is there. It is reserved and kept in the day of judgment. But you are living in the grace period. Therefore, you are exempted when there is true repentance. Yes, disclaimer, true repentance from your heart. If you don't, if you are not having true repentance, you are gray, using grace as a magic word. And uh, the blood of Jesus has the tap water to wash, to wash your ugly hand and your ugly heart temporarily and again tomorrow morning you start the same business of sinning you're in the same spree of watching pornography brother i'm telling you bigger will be your account and bigger will be your judgment and bigger will be your punishment ah i hope you're with me right we covered the next uh, category murmuring definitely will lead you towards condemnation and condemnation will definitely keep those punishments in reservation you understood all right my time is up therefore if i start the next category you know it will take time i'm very confident that in the next um, four or five sessions we will be able to complete okay right eyes closed and heads bowed down heavenly father we want to thank you for um, helping us to understand the word of god in a subtle way that we need to really understand in a subtle way Thank you for your help. Thank you for leading us towards light. Thank you for helping us to understand our shortcomings. And thank you, Lord, for holding us closely by your side. Help my brothers, sisters. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Please share these uh, channel details with your friends and relatives. You subscribe yourself to my channel. Um, therefore, you will see all these new videos and uh, doctrines and teachings and preachings being released. You will get a notification and uh, instantaneously you can watch. Spend some time, beloved, I'm telling you. Spending one hour per day is not a big deal, I'm telling you. You, you. you have time for everything. And I'm telling you, you don't have to sit down and watch, right? You can download this and or you can tune into my channel and then put in that earphones and um, dear sisters, you can cook and listen. Uh, dear brothers, you can jog and listen. You can drive and listen. You can work and listen. Yeah, somehow let the word of God enter into your into your heart okay and where the hearing is there is wisdom bible says and where wisdom is there is redemption there is deliverance may god bless you amen